welcome to the Half-Blood Report. Here we discuss Percy Jackson news, interviews, and all things Ryordan. I'm Samuel, your co-host. And I'm Diego, your other co-host. And today we have a great guest on who we're really glad to have back. Yeah, Topher Bradfield is the founder of Camp Half-Blood Austin Branch. Welcome back, Topher. Guys, it is so good to be back with you. You're doing amazing work. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's been it's been quite a wild ride since we spoke to you last. It sure has. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> getting to talk to Uncle Rick, wow. Yeah, that was... I mean, uh, we were so honored to be able to have the opportunity, and we're glad that the interview came out pretty good. It came out perfectly, guys. Thank you. Well, yeah, thanks. Let's let's do this, Topher. Um so so kind of what's what's been up since we last talked? You know, Camp Half Blood, uh the summer has ended, but you know, what are what are you still doing um Percy Jackson related as of now? Yeah, guys, great question. Uh so since this will be coming out after the actual event, I will say uh there is a Halloween event. Uh it'll be the day before Halloween, actually, on October thirtieth. And It'll be a haunted half-blood experience, like an online haunted house set in Ooh. the Camp Half-Blood Austin branch world. It's going to be creepy and fun, uh, and we're so looking forward to putting it on. And it's going to feature the Smileys and Mr. D. Mm. So that's really cool. That's very spooky. <laughs> and uh, obviously events, but you yourself, have you been doing any interesting things how how was your Tower of Nero uh, arc? <laughs> my yeah, my my Tower of Nero experience was emotional. I'm sure like it was for a lot of folks that have been mm-hmm. with the series for as long as we have. You know, it's been it's been, you know, over 15 years and uh it was it was a roller coaster ride. I I downloaded the audio book, I think at I don't know, 2 or 3 in the morning. And started listening to the audiobook then. I just got up and listened to the audiobook until my book arrived uh, via, via mail. And then I switched over to my book. So that was really cool. And then I was at the Kepler's event with Rebecca Roanhorse and, and Rick Riordan, which was, I think, the next to last show on his tour. So that was like really, really cool. Um, oh, wow. And, you know, he answered two of... Like he answered two of our questions, <gasps> like which was great, and you could see his his face uh, kind of light up when he uh, read, you know, read the first one. So it was it was a really really fun experience. I still fanboy, you know, after all <laughs> these years, I still fanboy over over all of this stuff. But um, yeah, it was a it was a wonderful way to end the series. It's a hard job trying to balance um, checking in with all of our favorite characters while still not having that kind of epilogue kind of feel. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I know, yeah. I know he was very vocal about like not having this kind of like three years later thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think he did a great job, left a lot of yeah. um, free space for our imaginations to sort of take over and, 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 and fill in the blanks. And then of course those tantalizing threads, that yeah. We come back and yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's was... that's true. I, I, I can. I think that we'll probably be talking and thinking about that book and what and it and what happened after it for for a long time. Um, yeah. So, you you did. Um, I in, to your first answer, you brought up the smileys, and so, you, we kind of realized while we were there that Camp Half Blood Austin has its own sort of lore behind it. I was wondering if you could go back to sort of the beginning and talk about, you know, when you started introducing characters that weren't part of the myths or Rick's books and how you came up with the smileys. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So let's see. I think after, <clears throat> after the first year, the very, very first year of camp was an apple of discord kind of story. Uh, and mm-hmm. we had, you know, Luke involved and, and it, it, it's it kind of played with the characters from the books a, a little more um, closely than we do now. After mm-hmm. that, we had to come up with another way to express kind of villains that that allowed us to have an Austin Branch feel. And the first villains mm-hmm. that we came up with were the um, League of Machines and Monsters. 
And that was a group of um, machines and monsters. Yeah, the League of Machines. <laughs> and monsters. Yeah, that um, one's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> right. It was a group of of um, very angry, upset uh, sons and daughters of Hephaestus that we had them starting wars and making arms and weapons and stuff for all sides of the conflict and then swooping in after the battle was over to find, of course, the demigods, uh, because there are always demigods, you know, after big battles like that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and then say, hey, isn't this horrible? Our our godly parents don't like us. Um, and <gasps> they let this kind of stuff happen. Um, come join our group and we can build and manufacture a power to rival that of Mount Olympus. And then we'll throw them down and use our power for the betterment of all demigods and humankind. And while that sounds great, they were the ones who were starting the wars, profiting from the wars. Uh, and and um, yeah, they were a, a really kind of despicable group. We have an entire journal um, from one of its former members that sort of chronicles the history of the League of Machines and Monsters. And they were with us out at camp for for years and years and years. And it was like, you thought you cut off one head of the Hydra and then you know, mm -hmm. three more would grow back. And it, it, they, they kept cropping up again and again and again. And they were, they were the villains that you just love to hate. Um, wow. Then we introduced the smileys and it was, it was on um, like a lot of stuff when we're planning out camp for the year in the coming years sometimes there's like a color there's a scent there is a snippet of story or some sort of half remembered event that kicks something off you know you just latch on to it and go well yeah that would be kind of cool what if what if we did this yeah mm -hmm. and the smileys um began on a on a quest like a couple of days before the quest i I, I found this mask and this is a kind of a behind the, the uh, curtain kind of look here. Mm -hmm. And so there was this really, this gross kind of caricature of a smiley face. It looked like it had been hacked out of wood um, and you could still see the wood grain and it was yellow and it had this really big kind of rictus looking grin on it. And so uh, the first time we encountered this character was while we were on a quest. We were on the Hyperion Trail in the park, and we were heading towards what we call the Hades Tree. And um, you know, the Hades Tree is this massive, massive oak, and it's got a giant hollow in it, like a hole. Uh, and the air inside that hollow, you can, you, it's cold. It feels like it, it pours out of the tree and down onto the ground. Um, and so, you know, uh, boy, it's roots go deep. And if you were tiny enough to fit in that hole, it said that you could, you know, make your way into the underworld. So wow. we were headed there. I don't remember what for at this point, cause it was a long, long time ago. There was an old crumbling bench that, that the, the questing group kind of happened to pass on this, this old trail and on it, we thought was a duffel bag. And, and so we walked by the duffel bag. Well, that's weird, you know? Um, okay. And then we continued on, we had our, our adventure and we were running away. We were running back because we were being chased by something. I don't remember what it was. And we got to the bench on the way back to the uh, dining hall and the duffel bag unfolded itself like it was all knees and elbows, you know, uh, these impossibly long arms and legs wow. and just kind of stretching out. And it stood up. It was wearing a, oh my a God. <laughs> hat or, or something like it. And it kind of cocked its head at us and it had mist kind of coming out from the back of the mask. Um, and it pointed at us and just shot mist out of its fingers. And that was our experience with the very first smiley and we nicknamed it duffel bag of course it freaked us out we continued running and i'd say about another 300 yards down the path there was an, an area of really really tall grass you know like maybe five 
five and a half feet high. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's some um, tall grass. Really, really, really tall grass. And the same smiley duffel bag popped up and out of the grass. Like it got in front of us somehow and popped up again. <laughs> of course, we all lost it. We were freaking out. Um, you know, ran back to to the dining hall to report, you know, what we'd seen. And, you know, we'd gone through this horrific thing, you know, over at the Hades tree. But the thing that really stuck with everybody was this smiley figure. This this thing we nicknamed smileys, that particular smiley, the first one we encountered, we nicknamed Duffel Bag. And from that year to you know, last year even, we've encountered a whole host of different smileys. They're these sort of parasitic masks that float around the forest and wow. they attach themselves to, to living things, usually humanoids, um, sometimes park goers, which is you know really unfortunate. And it sort of drives them insane. So they become, you know, chaotic and random. And I think all of the worst aspects of that person are sort of amplified kind of through the mask. So that sounds pretty scary. It's pretty scary, man. Yeah, it's it's and we've seen them floating in the forest in small groups, just kind of, you know, hovering in the air. Uh, and uh, in recent years, there have been like, I think what we call a, a, a proto smiley. It's a it's a mask that looks kind of wood uh, and but it's it's got no smile. It's just got those those weird eyes. eyes. And it looks again like it's been kind of roughly hacked out of of the wood um and and we found out just this last summer after all these years of dealing with the smileys um that mr d had a hand in their in their creation in the very very first creation of the very first smiley mask um that and that was a whole that that side sounds like a like a mr d thing to do <laughs> create yeah. masks that go around making people insane yeah well we we think that um, we think that it had a lot to do with with a, a Thespis. He created the first mask for Thespis. Um, you know, you're sort of thanking Thespis for for being such a good acolyte of of drama, and uh, and things went horribly wrong, and then the masks began to multiply, and we've discovered that there is yet another type of smiley um through through the haunted half bloods quest that um that will have happened by the time you all hear this so oh man a new smiley haunt, yeah that's the, pretty crazy i want to hear more about the, that yeah oh, the wow. haunt is actually us going into mr d's memories <gasps> and yeah, and seeing how all of that came to be, and and the horror show that that was. So, jeez, oh, um, yeah, and um, and then the next online quest will be about the smileys. So, yeah, um, kind of a, a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. what what are the plans for uh, Camp Half Lit Austin this upcoming summer? Um, and in the uh, space between uh, last summer and the next one. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we've got a lot going on. We've got last summer's scrapbook is coming out. Um, you know, sort of the highlights of um, of the fans of the Camp Half Blood Austin branch who, who who went through the experience. That was put together um, on on the Half Bloods Assemble you know page, you know the you know the uh, Hangout page. So so that'll be coming out soon. Registration for Camp 2021 will go live on November 6th, and it will be for online. Right now, we are we are comfortable saying, hey, we had a very successful online version um, of of Camp Applet Austin Branch. We do it well. Um, mm -hmm. our, our camp attendees had fun, uh, and we want to do it again. We don't know if the state park will be open. We don't know where we'll be in the whole pandemic thing. And until until we have a better understanding of where we're going and all the health implications, we're going to make plans for, um, for for online camp, you know, for sure. So that'll go on sale um, in November. And 
in the event that it's possible to have camp in the park again during the summer, um, then you can take uh, your registration from the online event and move it to the in-park you know, version if you want. And for those that can't make the trip to Austin for any reason, we're going to do online right alongside a uh, in-the-park camp. And I think that's, that is going to be the plan kind of moving forward. We'll be able to handle both and we're going to do both so that wow. more people around the world can have a, a, a shot at hanging out with a demigod family and going yeah. through sword training and kind of seeing what it looks like, you know, you know, while we are out there. Um, and then, and then have a whole different kind of set of quests. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, that is so cool, especially because, I mean, a lot of people are rushing to go, you know, straight back, but you're like, hey, we're doing so well virtually. We can just keep doing this to be safe. Um, yeah. If if a physical space does end up being possible, you mentioned that you would be doing both. Would this be like uh, alongside each other or would it be sort of mixed like some schools are doing? It'll, it'll be mixed. So, so, so for folks, you know, when, again, when it is safe enough for our staff and our, our campers and their families to go back in person, we will continue to have the online kind of running right alongside it. So some things out at camp will, will translate fine with that. Um, and other things like, you know, archery will have, we won't be able to do that kind of really well <laughs> for the online folks. So <laughs> You're so not it, won't, it won't be, be the, mailing any bows. Yeah, <laughs> it won't be the entire experience, but it will be as much of it as translates well. And um, I, I think, I think it'll be you know loads and loads of fun. So whereas like the park goers will have their quests sort of centered in and around the park, the online folks might have a quest in the park one day. It might be in the city of Austin, like another day. It might be in an old rundown kind of location where we have to find a missing artifact or a creature or a person or something like that. I mean, you just never know, but the online quest will have more freedom to kind of move around um, and experience kind of other locales that we just couldn't do at, you know, at the in-park camp. Yeah, so. no, definitely. Um, and 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 I, I think that this virtual experience, I know for a lot of demigods who may not live in the U.S., um, or who may not be able to make it to Austin has been really awesome because they get to connect with the community um, without having to make the commute all the way to to Austin. Yeah, yeah, and that's that. That was the whole the whole plan was to ensure that we could be with our Camp Half Blood Austin Branch community, our demigods from around the world, all year long. So you asked earlier, and I think I sort of partially answered it. You know, what are we doing for the rest of the year? And we do have other events. So there was the Haunted Half-Blood event that, that will have happened by the time this podcast comes out. We are playing with the idea of either having a winter solstice event or Ooh. something in or around the new year for, for more grown-up kind of demigods who have sort of aged out of the camp experience, doing something for them. Um, and then like a Valentine's Day, like demigod prom online. Oh, um, So, so... So lots of stuff going on for our community so that we can stay connected and feel like um, life isn't quite as rough as we get through the, the uh, pandemic. So that's, that's the goal. We want to be there for our folks. Wow. Yeah, that's, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I, I, I definitely feel like there's a lot of people out there who uh, would definitely want to sign up uh, for a camp. Um, and this is actually a related question from our patron, Simone, who uh, is a big fan. And she was wondering, what exactly is the step-by-step -step process for buying a ticket? For for registration? Yeah, because yeah. she's, she's been trying to do it, but... Um... Absolutely. So, so um, on, our, on our website, which is, uh, you know, camphalfbloodaustin.org, you can go to our website, and there will be a register button there when the time is right that'll go live on november 6th let me just double check that i told you i was going to do that i'm going to look at the calendar here real quick sure, for sure. november um 
yeah it yeah looks and like the link 6th. will be in the the link will be in the description so absolutely yeah we'll throw a link in the description for you all um and it'll it'll step you through it there it'll be very very easy to do you'll get a a confirmation email you know once that's done um the faq will be set up so that it'll answer probably about 99.9% .9 of your your questions the most commonly asked questions about you know what happens with this and what's your policy on that it it'll be really That's really cool. easy to do yeah no mm -hmm. thank you um i, I yeah, know for it, me when i was trying to sign up for kev it was uh, still a little bit difficult yeah we're 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 going to streamline that process you'll you'll have to put your email in and that kind of stuff but um but yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll work out for sure. We have two different kind of databases that we have to work from. Um, one of them is the first part, kind of where you pay. Um, and then it takes you, it gives you a link to our database that is our, our um, kind of our parent portal where all of your personal information goes in. And that's the information that your counselors use so that they know who you are, any medical conditions you may have, who the emergency contacts are, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so, and so, yeah, that's that's still going to be a thing. But um, all of that information is really kind of necessary, even for an online camp, just so that we have all of our eyes dotted and our T's crossed, and make sure that yeah, yeah, we're following protocols. Yeah, and I will say from personal experience, your your team and everyone at Camp Halfway Austin has been very cool and understanding with uh, helping with that sort of difficulties signing up. So uh, yeah, I'm glad that it's getting better. Issues, and our, our CS team is amazing. So our customer service crew is, is great. All right. Um, I have yeah. uh, another question kind of relating to the year going forward. Uh, last time we actually talked about some sort of continuation of apple of discord style online quests yeah and i was wondering and you we even discussed the possibility of them being written by rick rard and presents offer so i was just hoping for a little status update on that <laughs> right yeah, so what's going on Pofer needs to finish the um the bible for for what i'm i'm calling the online quest the first of those is the apple of discord the apple of discord the final chapter is going up in about a week or two, it's it's finished. It just takes a while to sort of format and get it into that uh, kind of platform. So that that's fun. It coincides with the wrap up of the Tower of Nero. So there's a there's a lot that gets wrapped up in there, and I hope that you all find it kind of really really fun. This the mm -hmm. second online quest will be about the Smileys, uh, and that hopefully will be out kind of mid November ish. And then the, the next one um, could be written by Carlos. If Topher, and I'm going to speak to myself, speak about myself in the third person, um, if, if I can get my act together and finish up the Bible that goes out to other writers so that they understand the format and kind of what's happening. Carlos, when he was with us uh, during camp last summer, asked the campers, what kind of story would you like to have? And one of the things that I'm really excited about that came out of that conversation with our campers was Carlos was going to sort of gamify the sort of choose your own quest style nature of it. And mm -hmm. you could level up as you, Ooh. as you sort of went through it. He, he discussed that as one of the options, which I thought was really intriguing and really fun. So I'm looking forward to seeing what Carlos comes up with. Uh, Carlos is a, has been a, a, an amazing champion of camp. Yeah, I definitely know Carlos. Carlos has been working. Yeah, yeah, he's been working on a lot of uh, gaming stuff. Um, so I'm totally interested to see how that's going to play out. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, get get my gear together, go defeat the final evil boss. That would be yep. so fun. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's all it's all it's all been so exciting, and I've I've had a preview of the next um, you know the next online quest. As, as our writer is working on that. And um, it's really exciting. It's well-written. It's really creepy and really fun. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. And, and sorry to, sorry to keep asking you about this, but um, uh, do you, do you, do you think we got like a, a general time when these will start coming up? 
yeah, hopefully, um, again, hopefully the, the, the next online quest will be mid November. The one after that, we hope to, to be able to get Carlos the uh, Bible in time, you know, for the, um, you know, for the online quest story format so that, so that he can have that done maybe by the end of January. Mm -hmm. And then again, towards the end of April and then, and then nothing during camp because we're all incredibly busy. Mm -hmm. Well, that yeah. sounds awesome. <clears throat> yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm totally well, that's, looking that's forward to seeing more of that. I feel like uh camp half blood Austin needs a, uh, a, a video game design team. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be because great? Because it's, it's been a that. while since I, I don't think th I, I I know there's been like some Percy Jackson games. Uh, there was one for the release of the movie and others that are kind of online and stuff. But there's no mm -hmm. like real um, Percy Jackson game, or at least like remotely official Percy Jackson game. Um, and if anybody could pull it off, I think it'd be you guys. Oh man, that'd be so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, do do some sort of like World of Warcraft style massive multiplayer online kind of platform. Yeah. But, but in the Percy Jackson world, that'd be so cool. That would uh, be I was uh I, I mean online would be so much better, but I was uh, I was going to say just all the all the consoles are going to like start a bidding war for like for the Percy Jackson thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. One you you got to you got to go talk to Disney Plus. You got to give them a pitch. <laughs> that'd be like hey now that you guys are gonna make millions of dollars off the show you might want to spend one of those millions on getting a good game <laughs> yeah i you know i remember kind of you know early on fantasizing about like wow if 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 this ever became like a, a an in-person experiential commodity kind of thing where where they needed people who who have been living in that world and designing in that world for other, for other people, um, man, I would throw my hands up and I go, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm right here. Let me, I'll consult with you. I'm right here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, if, um, if they need someone for a theme park, Topher is the person. <laughs> That's so, right. Topher, um, Topher's the man to talk to. And we, we do know Rick, uh, Rick really wants that theme park. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he was, he was careful to say that's so far down the line. Um. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if it, if it, if it was to happen, <laughs> yeah, if it was to happen, they know who to talk to. Oh, my um, God. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, there's been so many, there's been like, like, like Star Wars video games. And that's like, oh, what, sure. what is that? Star Wars is, is Disney. So basically it's the same thing. Yeah, but I what? mean, Star Wars is also... <laughs> The single largest <laughs> pop culture phenomenon. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, <laughs> we 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 gotta we gotta get Percy Jackson up. That's up right. To that level. We gotta get it growing. You and you guys are doing. You guys are doing your job. Um, you you are helping <laughs> spread the word to the next generation of of campers. I've um, you know, I've I've spent the last fifteen years getting a lot of gray hair, um, <laughs> and 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 aging rapidly, happily but rapidly over and through all of this. And it's been such a privilege to be able to get to do this for so long mm -hmm. with all of you. Um, I, I, I tell the campers every year cause it's true. Like the, the best thing to have come out of the camp half blood Austin experience, the, the real life kind of adventuring and questing and stuff has been that I get to be around such amazing, amazing demigods like you all. It's, it's, thank it's, you added so much to to my life to watch you all kind of grow up and become scientists and doctors and <laughs> you know inventing stuff and going off and changing the world it's really cool um really cool thank you well yeah you've, you i mean you've definitely uh changed the world for a lot of demigods who attend camp so i hope so it's not I, like I, you haven't <laughs> you haven't played a part in it thank you thank you it's been it's, it's been it's been a real a real privilege. This is like a a fun fact to relating to what we were talking about like ten minutes ago. But I just wanted to point out that I I recently read that the video game industry is worth much much more than the entire film and TV industry. I would totally believe that. Yeah. I mean Disney, you got to get on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you kind of you kind of mentioned playing playing one's part to get the word out there about you know making uh, Percy Jackson 
you know, a cultural phenomenon, which would be awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. So, <laughs> or even even more of one, I should say. Uh, it's already and, you know, <laughs> but I was I was kind of wondering, how do you make sure that you keep Camp Half Blood equally engaging for sort of hardcore Rick Riordan fans, but also sort of more lax Percy Jackson fans? Yeah, well, I I think there's something there's something in the Camp Half Blood Austin branch for everybody. So if you're not like a um a, a, a massive fanboy fangirl um there you know you can come and and enjoy a good story you know to adventure through uh and be thrilled like with an online quest and get to go on these you know um handheld kind of you know camera style quests with our our questing group and share stories and and go to a music or an art class or whatever it happens to be um, that's all set in and threaded through the uh, Percy Jackson world. So loads of fun, loads and loads of fun. I know, you know, the, the camp at the park attracts um, so many different types of individuals, you know, some who are, are, are more kind of athletically disposed that love sword fighting all day and running around and archery and being really, really physical. And then there are those who enjoy doing the events, but then sitting down and trying to work through all the layers of the story. Like, what did this mean? And when we walked by that tree and it started talking to us um, and gave us this kind of prophecy, what did that mean? You know, you Mm -hmm. know, there's so many different things. We have a talking radio cabinet that has the spirit of Ganymede in it out at um you know like in the park and it insults people or occasionally it'll let us listen in on the transmissions of some of the villains um it does all kinds of stuff and so there are layers all over the place uh sometimes folks want to just do artwork and talk and observe like folks and so in the quiet times of camp they sit down and they'll sketch and they'll draw and then they'll write little stories based on kind of what they're experiencing and it there's there's something there's something for everyone. We're not a magic pill. You know, obviously we're not going to be for everybody, but, um, but I feel like the group of folks who have grown up in the camps and who now work there, um, each of them has brought their own individual experiences and hopes for sort of paying it forward, like to the rest of you. And so many of our ideas for camp have come from campers because we're really careful to ask you guys and gals what it is you like about camp. What do you, what do you want? Um, how, how do we make this better? You know, things like yeah. introducing ourselves with our pronouns, you know, like totally. in the morning. Um, and in, in doing those, you know, kinds of things, very, very small, but, but, but meaningful steps forward, we hope. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it, there's all sorts of stuff that we do and we hope that there's something there for everyone. Um, yeah, and you get to contribute, which is great. You're a part of the story. Mm-hmm. Totally, and I th- I think this brings us uh, more more towards the end of the interview. Um, and I just wanted to ask you you you've mentioned this this space where it's so many different backgrounds and so many different types of people. Um, and uh, Sammy and I have been to Camp Half Blood Austin online, and it felt like such a positive and inclusive space. And I want to ask you how how do you manage to create that space um how how do you deal with with people who may not like that space as much and how how do you make sure that you keep it so that everybody feels like they they have a place at camp it's a really really good question we try to keep it as as open and nurturing for everyone as we possibly can a lot of time that means that ideas about kind of diversity, um, equitability, access, um, that has to be baked into the story. It has to be baked into the characters that, that you're encountering and the discussions that we have around it. I know, you know, you guys were probably there for some of our lunchtime chats, which were like mind blowing for me, um, where we had discussions about race, um, and we had discussions about, you know, the inequalities that exist everywhere. And 
And so it's, it's oftentimes it's just about having that dialogue, not forcing it on anybody, having it be, having it be peer led um, and having us there to sort of kind of monitor things. But it, yeah, it ended up being this, we realized as it was happening that it ended up being this, this really amazing, open, accessible and safe space for folks kind of to discuss things. It's true that we have demigods who come in um, who haven't been exposed to a different way of thinking. And rather than feeling like we're shoving it down somebody's throat, the, the people who sort of discuss this stuff, their, their peers as they talk about it, um, make it so that that person doesn't feel stupid for not knowing something that they haven't encountered yet, that they didn't know they didn't know. And instead going, well, that's a good question. Hey, you know, here's, here's what we think is going on. Here's how it's affected me personally. Um, and folks kind of share those kinds of stories. And I think it's a lot of it is through story um, that this stuff is, is more understandable and easier to digest and kind of parse out and go, Oh, I understand now for a lot of you um, out there, a lot of our, our demigod campers. And, and so, yeah, we want to be a safe space. We want to be inclusive. We have an eye towards that um, when, when we are working on planning camp out and we want to continue to go that, that route, um, you know, from here forward. And I, I'm still learning about, um, you know, all of my uh, biases as well as, as I come across something. And one of my staff members goes, oh, well, hey, you know, now, now we refer to that this way, or we think about it this way. And I go, oh, okay, that's great. Thank you for correcting me. And that's, that's the atmosphere that we want to promote and hopefully have all of our other demigods leave with that, that, that open, it's sort of like open sourced kindness. You just understand and we move forward together. Well, thank you so that's, much, Topher. Yeah, that's, for, that's for... really, yeah, those are great sentiments. That's that's a powerful message that I think um, this this country as a whole needs more, um, and that we also need more of um, in the world in general. Just inclusivity and acceptance, um, and making sure that everybody feels validated. Um, so mm -hmm. thank you so much uh, for for joining us on the podcast today. Uh, yeah, thanks that's, so much uh, for giving... that's a great way to end. That's a yeah, and really we hope awesome... that we see you all at Camp Half Blood Austin again. It's going to be so much fun for those of you that have never joined us. Come try us out. Yeah, definitely go try out Camp Half Blood Austin. Yeah, and uh, on on that, I mean, uh, so what what are all the things on the internet for for Camp Half Blood Austin for you? What do people got to check out on social media or websites or whatever? Yeah, I mean, um, at CHB Austin is our Instagram. We have a TikTok account. It's also, Ooh. I believe, at CHB Austin. Um, there's a Twitter account, which is mostly memes these days, uh, but they are funny. And, and then the CampHalfBloodAustin.org website will take you and put you where you need to go in terms of what you'd like to find out. So we've been around since 2006, kind of with the, the uh, programming and the groups of people that we work with. And um, you know, we're lucky to have such great partners in the community and with Disney. Um, it's it's wonderful. So thank you all. Thank yeah, well, you, thanks Topher. for joining us, Topher. It's uh, always great to have you. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Hey, it's Samuel here, and that's it for this episode of The Half Blood Report. Uh, sorry for the episode being late, but I hope it was worth the wait considering we got an awesome episode with Topher. You can follow the show on Twitter at Half Report. You can also find us on Instagram at the Half Blood Report or email the show at the Half Blood Report at gmail.com. We also have a website, the Half Blood Report .com. And please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. We read and respond to those on our seasonal mailbag episodes. I would like to give a special thank you and shout out to our patrons. Currently supporting us, we have Simone, Magnus Chase, and an awesome new patron, Finian. They help keep our show going by paying for our hosting service and website. There are many special benefits you can get by becoming a patron at all the different tiers. You can read more about them and consider joining at patreon.com slash join slash the half report. 
and that link is also in the description. That said, it's time for credits. Our theme music is actually by my co-host Diego. I'm Samuel, and I do our editing. This is the Half-Blood Report podcast, the only HBR that matters. Survive till next week.